Hey guys, welcome back. Check out this video by Mark Moss. Goal is to have wealth. The difference of rich and wealth, right? Rich is like, I make a million bucks a year. Mm -hmm. But in California, you make a million bucks a year, half goes to taxes. I have 500 grand. I'm married. I have two kids. They go to private school. I drive two brand new cars. I'm broke. Yeah. I make a million dollars a year and I'm broke. So that's rich. Wealth is I have assets. I like that. Earned income should go into assets that produce passive income and only increase your lifestyle when the passive income goes up. Yeah. All the earned income goes into the assets. All the equity when you sell these assets should go back into more assets to where you can increase the velocity of money. Right. When people ask me like, at what price will you sell your Bitcoin? Like you don't understand how money works, do you? Why would I sell assets? My goal is to get more assets. All right, Kirby. What do you think on what he said? We've only said this 10,000 times on our channel. Right. Uh, I mean, he's spot on. Of course, th they always start off with a big number. And then I see why that disenfranchised people that don't have that number. It don't matter if you make 30,000 a year, 40,000 a year, 50,000 a year. You know, a million is just a big round number everybody want to talk about. Just because you make that money, it don't matter how much money you make from physical labor a year. You have to go back and work to do it again every time. That's earned income. If you look at the tax code, earned income get taxed the highest. So think about it. The people who work the hardest to make the most money for earned income get taxed the most. So that should be a nugget in people's brain. If I work harder to make more money, if I get the fifth, sixth, seventh job, and if you make low income, you need that, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh job just to keep your head above water or whatever, go for it. But for people that are thinking like, oh, I'm going to just keep working, 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 just to accumulate all this money, you will be taxed at the highest. The people who use their money, put it in assets to make more money, get taxed the least. And there's a reason why it's been like that forever. This company was founded, is ran by monarchs and people with money. So they're always going to vote and do a thing in the best interest to them. Now, you can be upset that that's the tax law. You can go vote to get the tax law changed. But the truth is, is don't fight the feeling. Just do what they do. And you don't have to make a million dollars a year to do what they do. Alex, do you make a million dollars a year? No. Nope. And you're still doing what they're doing. It's all about taking your active income that you work for that's going to get taxed at the highest rate anyway, put it into assets. Use those assets to buy more assets or to pass you off passive income. When that passive income or drip or whatever comes in, you're better off spending that money because it'll be taxed at a lower rate than what you work for. And the good part that he said was you start increasing your lifestyle when the passive income gets above the work income. That's when you can increase your lifestyle because once you did that, so let's just say it's just you, you're doing it as a single person. Once your passive income gets to the level of your work income, that's like you just married yourself and you just bring in an extra paycheck that's matching what you're doing. So now you can increase your lifestyle a little bit. Not until, not before. That's when you can increase your lifestyle to start doing a little bit more. People's, people will go buy one rental property and be like, oh, I got to buy a Lamborghini and let people know I'm out here stunting. No. No, <laughs> still keep driving the Honda. You know, in Alex's case, keep driving the car with the broken window and he just put a mirror up there for the side <laughs> view mirror. You know, he all illegal, but that's what, he, that's what it took. You know, it wasn't just, okay, I got one rental property. Oh, I got a ball out. That's not how that's not how the game is played. And people don't understand that. It's the assets can increase your lifestyle. Do not work to increase your lifestyle because this is the thing. If you increase your lifestyle based off the work that you put in, anything can happen. You can get sick, you can get hurt, you can get injured, you can lose your job. And then you lose that lifestyle. But if you use the money that you work for to buy assets. And then the assets pay for your lifestyle, you can get sick, you can get injured, you can get hurt, you can get whatever, but the assets still gonna pay for the lifestyle. Even if you even if you can't work no more, the assets are still gonna pay for the lifestyle. So that's the mindset that people need to get in. If everybody wanna fight Washington and they wanna yell tax the rich, if you can't beat them, join them. 
Just do what they do. And you don't need to start making a million dollars a year just to start doing what they're doing. You can do it making $10 an hour. You can make it $20,000 a year, $30,000 a year. Just start taking that money, putting it in assets. You only got to do it for a little while, and then you're going to see the compound effect. You're going to see the snowball rolling. The snowball of your assets is going to get bigger and bigger, and then you're going to be more, more motivated to do assets because you now you're starting to see the fruits of your labor, and then you're like, damn. I should have been doing this a long time ago. And that's what all the wealthy people are doing. Not the rich people. That's what the wealthy people are doing. And that's how they're not paying taxes. And the people that's working, you know, the $20, $15 an hour jobs, the people that's making a lot of active earned income are the ones that's putting the tax bill for everybody in the United States. Yeah, we've talked about, and I mean, we won't go too much into detail since it's involving taxes, but we've talked about how the tax codes are just different for active income earners and passive income earners. Like the, the, the way your tax is different. They don't tax you the same way on a W-2 job as they do for if you own 10 rental properties. So there's a lot more benefits to retaining your money and reinvesting your money um, if you have those assets. And assets, as we've talked about too, is like that's the true form of money. The dollar is not, you can't really rely on the dollar. It's just paper and it has a false value that's been put onto it based off of the government, what the government says it's worth. But the, but if you buy properties, if you buy Bitcoin or gold or stocks or whatever, if you buy um, uh, commodities, if you buy things that actually have value to the, the market itself that people find value in, then you, you're holding real money and it can be exchanged in in terms of actually as if it were a currency. So people like when you stack cash, you're just stacking something that has no meaning and then you're getting taxed on it. Plus there's inflation. And so everything works against you when you are a active income earner and you're thinking with that mindset when you buy assets inflation actually works in your case prices will go up which increases the price of your assets your taxes are different so you get all the benefits when you hold assets rather than compared to just cash itself right yeah i mean you you hit the nail on the head and for the people it's more than just real estate just look at this Google, you don't have to go read the text code. Google, see what your tax bracket is as a worker and then see what your taxes is, uh, what your taxes are on dividends. It's a lower tax rate. If you want to go to the real estate, go there. I mean, if you want to buy Bitcoin, you don't have to pay taxes until you sell it. If you never sell it, the assets go up. The same thing with stocks. The assets just keep going up. You never have to sell it. You can borrow money against it and don't pay taxes on the money. And that is the secrets that the wealthy people are doing to keep them out of these tax penalty thresholds. They're willing to take less money in their active income so they can have more money in their assets. That's why uh, 401ks, you know, it's pre-tax. If you just put it in there and let it grow, you have a lower tax bill because it shows you made less active income so and then your assets are growing yeah on the back end you might have to pay some taxes or you can find a way to backdoor the whole thing and you ain't got to worry about that at all but there is there is tricks of the trade that's out there that's why a lot of people the like the the people that's in the lower class they don't pay taxes even though they uh you know bitch moan and complain that they do and it's a simple math formula to see that People that's in the middle class don't pay taxes. I mean, it comes out of your paycheck, but you get it all back. Uh, but the people that's in, you know, the upper middle class and just striving to, oh, I gotta, I gotta get get a promotion, get a promotion. And I, I remember somebody just calling me the other day, hey man, I just got this big promotion, and I'm like, okay. But they thought they were supposed to have a party, a big shindig, a big soiree for promotion, and then the next thing, and the next breath, oh man, I ain't gonna take more taxes. You sh you're striving to live a life based on earned income. It's not gonna work. 
in the long run because again anything can happen and then that lifestyle is over people you're going to get old if you live long enough that lifestyle is going to end the pension funds of the yesteryears of the baby boomers are over social security is all but dilapidated if you think that you're going to survive just off the earned income you made and you didn't put it in assets you didn't invest it and you didn't do anything else you're going to be 60 70 80 years old sleeping on your kid's couch or sleeping in your uh hopefully your mom or somebody had a, a house or something you'd be sleeping in the basement that's what's going to happen it happens all the time just walk around florida the vacation i mean the retirement state of the united states there's a lot of people that's on fixed income and they got pensions they got social security and they're getting priced out of the market because inflation rents are going up cost of medicine is going up cost of everything services is going up and then their pensions and their 401ks or what their pensions and their social security is not is not keeping up keeping up with that level of increase so they're finding ways to cut now they're saying oh i gotta move to another state the proof is in the pudding you don't have to make the same mistake everybody else making to learn from it just look to see what everybody else is doing study what retired people are doing now and see what money they have and Calculate what you have in retirement. If you have nothing, you get nothing. And then you can't blame the government, especially if you watch the video, because now you know the trend. With all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button. Uh, don't forget to share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.